welcome back to the garden. It is a cloudy day today. We've been having tons and tons of rain. It's two inches one day, two and a half inches the next, three inches. So right now I'm in between rainstorms and um, I'm here with some of my brassicas. I got quite a few of cabbages and I have some cauliflower and broccoli mixed in here. But I have a lot of my brassicas throughout the garden because this is probably one of my favorites and I like it and I try to get in as early as I can. Hopefully by the end of March, I try to get all that in so that I will have plenty of this food that I could preserve, you know, for future to last until next season. And the great thing about these brassicas, especially my cabbage, it works so well in the cooler weather. So we have nice cool springs here in Missouri where we are. So they grow very well, but it, they don't grow well if you don't get them in soon enough. Cause I know a lot of people are saying, I can never grow it. Why can't I grow it? Well, the trick is you need to really get in there. You might need to be in the garden and your coat and your scarf on. But generally, if you have a long enough growing season, you can get it and, it, and you have those um, cooler temperatures, especially early on. So right now, as you can see, come on down here. Let's look. Some of my cabbage is starting to get little bitty heads on it. There's a little guy in there. Can you see it? And so they're starting to develop. And I'm waiting anxiously so I can preserve this. But what I wanted to do today is some of my other neighbors have already had some of this cabbage already come to harvest and I was lucky enough to be gifted some. So what I wanted to do is bring you along into the outside kitchen with me right now and make a recipe with you. So come on inside. Well, now we're back in the outside kitchen. As you can see, I'm cutting up some red cabbage, cabbage that I had, our neighbors had given me a couple of them. So I thought it would be a great day to come with you guys and make a special kind of sauerkraut. And this is not just any sauerkraut. It's going to be a sauerkraut that I'm going to mix with apples. So I had a friend of mine who went out of town and you know when you want to clear out your refrigerator because you're not going to use your stuff. So she gave me some apples. So I got some apples and I'm going to make an apple sauerkraut. Doesn't it sound delicious? And a lot of people are like, ooh, I don't like sauerkraut. Because you know, a lot of you guys might have been having the kind that you have in the store and the cans, it's been heated. This is going to be a raw sauerkraut, a wonderful fermented sauerkraut. And if you've never tried homemade, homemade sauerkraut, it is amazing. It has a wonderful flavor. And especially with the apples, you guys are going to be amazed at how delicious this is. And it's easy. Really, you're only going to need a couple of ingredients. You're going to need one like big cabbage head or two smaller ones. It can be any color. It can be regular yellow cabbage or it can be a red cabbage. And you're going to just need a couple of apples. I'm going to do, I did three apples. I've already cut up one. Three apples and some salt. That's all you're going to need to make this recipe, and it's so simple. So the first thing I did with my cabbage is I rinsed it off and I peeled a few of the outer leaves off like this because I'm going to use that for later. So you don't want to have the immediate blemished leaves. You want one like underneath or so that's not blemished. And then I just rinsed them off really good, my cabbages. And then I'm just going to cut them, shred them up. And you guys can shred them however you feel comfortable shredding them up. So if you like them really little pieces or if you want bigger pieces, it's, it's up to you. It's very therapeutic cutting up your, your cabbage. <laughs> but for some of you guys that don't know is Doug and I, we moved out here. It's been now going on over 13 years. At the time we moved here, I didn't have a water source. We were just first moving off grid and it was like, you know, how am I going to preserve a lot of this harvest? We grew this great big garden. So I'm looking into how the people did it thousands of years ago and look to find out everyone fermented. They were fermenting, just using salt for preservation. And so I thought, you know, 
let's do it, you know? So, and I look back and I look at my grandmother. I'm Armenian and my grandmother used to do all this stuff. You know, and as a kid, you don't remember or pay attention to all that. You just kind of take it for granted. And she was doing a lot of this stuff already and I had no clue. But she had brought all these same kind of traditions and knowledge from the old country. And, you know, you could kick yourself for not paying attention. Us as adults, you know, you, you are like, oh my gosh, you know, why didn't I listen to my mom or my dad or my grandparents when they taught, when they were doing these things? And then you have to relearn a lot of this stuff. So, needless to say, did a lot more studying, kind of, kind of looked into all this. And so that's how I preserve probably 90, 90% or more of my harvest is through fermentation. And fermentation will last many, many months. I have many ferments that last year or over. And it depends on what it is. Because when you ferment it, you have like little microorganisms. So here's my cabbage, right? There's microorganisms on different things. Like here's a lemon, there's microorganisms on this. Here is an apple, same thing. So those little microorganisms, when you ferment them, you know, and when you hear the word fermenting and you hear about probiotics, probiotics are basically like a good bacteria. It's good bacteria that you're putting inside of you because you have good and bad bacteria and those good bacteria are gonna go in there and maybe get rid of some of the bad bacteria if you have too many. And then that way you want an equal balance of good and bad bacteria because unfortunately in this day and age, a lot of us have more bad bacteria and then sickness and disease can happen. You can have, you know, other issues arise because of that. So just by adding a little bit of a fermented food every day could definitely help because when you ferment something, it's going to produce lactic acid, like lactic acid bacteria. That's why a lot of times you hear this is called lacto-fermentation. And lacto doesn't mean dairy. A lot of people get confused with that, but lacto, it's lactic acid bacteria. And that is like the good bacteria, the good probiotic bacteria. And then that bacteria, is what is going to make your ferment safe and healthy. And then it's going to produce a beautiful ferment that you guys can enjoy. And it gives it that sour kind of flavor. Because you know when you have a pickle, like a fermented pickle, or you're tasting some fermented foods, it has that slightly kind of a acidic or kind of tangy flavor. And also when you ferment something, it's going to taste, it kind of gives it a, uh, it just, it kind of enhances the flavor. So that's what I love about it. And it can really make a meal rock. So if you're adding a little sauerkraut to a sandwich or on your soup or, uh, or in your salads, it just really tastes good. And I really enjoy this apple one because it's so easy to do. And then another thing that's really cool about fermentation is it makes it more available to your body when you do consume it. So it makes it more bioavailable. You're able to like I digest and assimilate it better because a lot of this is already broken down a lot because the fibers are being eaten up and digested a little bit better. Like you hear about yogurt, yogurt, the lactose is broken down a little bit more. A lot of the sugars and starches, like if you make kombucha, people are like, oh, I can't do that much sugar. Well, majority of all that sugar in that has been eaten up too. So that's what kind of helps it and then your body is, is able to assimilate it better. And another cool thing about it is you all often hear that you have your second brain is in your gut. And it kind of affects, you know, you have your, your feel-good chemicals, the serotonin and all that good stuff. And, uh, you know, if you have a happy gut, it can make you happier too. So I know for me personally, if I don't have my fermented food every day, I'm not in as good of, of a mood, believe it or not. <laughs> so true. And it also helps you stay regular. It, um, I mean, it's just, a, it's great. But you want to be careful when you are eating it. You don't want to eat the whole jar because it tastes good. A lot of people are like, ooh, this is so good. But you're putting a lot of those good bacteria in there. And they're, you know, getting rid of a lot of those bad guys too. And uh, you might get a little gas and bloating if you eat too much. So generally, when you first start, a tablespoon or two is fine. And then you might work up to having, you know, something with every meal. So you know that saying, you know, you don't want to do too much of a good thing. My cabbage is all chopped up. Now just the second ingredient that I'm going to use are my apples. I've already chopped up one apple and I did put 
some lemon juice on it so that they wouldn't brown. So I already didn't do that. <clears throat> but all I'm gonna do is chop up my apple. And the neat thing about fermenting, some people might wanna shred this. You could shred it if you wanted to, if you want it you know, a little thinner. Or put it in a kind of a food processor and kind of pulse it a little bit and do it that way. You know, it's your choice. That's what I like about, you know, cooking in general. It's like you kind of do what you like, what your family likes, how people like it, and just kind of do it to your taste. So I'm just gonna chop up these apples, and I'm gonna put about three of them in here. I generally like to make this apple kraut when we have apple season. But I got some apples, so I'm gonna make it because it is one of my favorites. Because that, that taste between, you know, that cabbagey kind of taste, kind of soury with a little bit of the sweetness, it always goes great together. Got one more apple left. I know a lot of people, you know, might be taking probiotics. So you're going to the store and you're paying high dollar for these probiotics when you guys can make them. And unfortunately, a lot of times with these probiotics that you buy, you might only get a few different strains and then you're taking the same strains all the time for months and months and months and months when you need a diverse variety of them in your gut. So that's why it's good to ferment some things and try different types. So like I like to ferment everything. You can do mustard and you can do ketchup, you can do salsa, you can do you know fermented dilly beans, you can make beets, you can do anything. And then that way you're getting all those little diverse microorganisms and you're getting a, a wide array of them inside of your digestive tract. What I wanted to tell you is um, Dr. Mercola, if some of you guys are familiar with him, he did a study. He sent in two tablespoons of his homemade sauerkraut. So he sent it in and they tested it and they found out that his two tablespoons, just two tablespoons of homemade sauerkraut had more probiotics in it than a whole hundred, like had a hundred pills of like pills that you get of probiotics. Isn't that crazy? So just by doing it from scratch and homemade, what a difference that was. And also it depends how long you fermented and because the longer you're gonna ferment, you're gonna get a little bit more. So what I'm gonna do here, I got everything chopped up really good. I'm gonna mix it all up. The main ingredient here that's gonna do all the magic is your salt. And I always tell you guys, not any salt will work. My favorite salt to use is the Redmond Real Salt right here from the United States in Utah. You know, it's locally mined and source. It, it's been protected. It's an ancient seabed. It has the best taste. It really enhances the flavor of my ferments. And I buy it in bulk all the time. I think the salt will really make or break your ferment. You do not want a refined salt because it may have iodine in it um, and it could ruin your ferment. So definitely you don't want that. You want a real salt that has not been um, bleached or contaminated or anything like that. So Redmond Real Salt, you can go to offgroupwithdougandstacy.com and you can get it, buy it in bulk and get a discount. So what we're gonna do here, I need my tablespoon, we are going to put some salt in here. Now for sauerkraut, because it's, it's hard sometimes, you have a head that might be really big, really little, and I know you can do your fermenting by weight, but I think over the past few years, I've kind of changed my tune on how I ferment when I do my sauerkraut. I'm going to put some on here and I'm gonna taste it. So I'm gonna start off with one heaping tablespoon of my unrefined salt. And I'm gonna start massaging it and start to break down some of the fibers of my cabbage. And once it breaks down just a little bit, I'm gonna give it a taste and add a little bit more. Because salt is what's gonna preserve this, okay? And then when you ferment, you gotta remember, too little salt is gonna cause mold, okay? Too much salt could halt the ferment and stop it. So you don't wanna have too much or too little. Per like a quart size jar, you can go anywhere between one tablespoon and three tablespoons. And that generally works for most everything except for, we don't want to get into too much, but pickles are a little different because they're more juicy, they have more liquid, so they'll absorb more and you can go a little bit more for like a pickle. And that's another thing, when you guys are fermenting, a lot of times you'll have vegetables and you let them sit around a long time. And when you let them sit down and sit, sit around a long time, they lose some of their moisture 
so they're not, they won't produce as much liquid when you ferment them. Like if you had really old cabbage, it may not produce quite as much. And I can really tell that these are a little fresher and it's good therapy. <laughs> oh, it smells good. Okay, so I have it all mixed up with my heaping tablespoon of salt. So now what I'm gonna do is taste it. So when I taste it, I want it to taste salty, but I don't want to taste it where it tastes really bad salty. If that, do you guys get that? So it wants to be a little salty, but not bad, bad salty. So I'm gonna put a little bit more in here because right now it just tastes teeny, teeny, teeny bit salty. I'm gonna put a little bit more. So I had one heaping, and then I'm gonna probably put half of a tablespoon in there. So this may, might have ended up to be about almost two tablespoons or so. So I'm just gonna keep breaking it down. And it's amazing when you started how full it was and then by the end, it's gonna really squish down. So here is the recipe, simple and basic, just apples, salt, and cabbage. I'm gonna put a wrench in it because one of my favorite things to add to sauerkraut, I think it just makes it rock, is caraway seeds right here, caraway seeds. So I'm gonna sprinkle some of them in here too. So if you guys like the taste of caraway seeds, then you'll love this. So just put that in there, or you don't have to do it at all, because it'll be good both ways. I'm gonna massage this, you know, a couple more minutes, and then I'm gonna put a towel over it, and I'm gonna run around and do a few things around here, and then I'm gonna come back, and by then it'll produce some juice, and then I'll show you what we're gonna do next. All right, we're back. It's, I guess it's probably been about 30, 40 minutes or so, and, uh, Let's see how much juice it's gotten. Oh yeah, it's got some nice juice in there. And as it ferments over the next day or so, day or two, it's gonna produce more liquid. So what you're gonna do is get your jar. Now, if you wanna go ahead, you can use quart size jars, you can use a gallon jar, you can use half gallon jars. You can do it however you want. I just use my little funnel and I'm going to pack it in there just like this. Now the one thing that is really cool about making it with a red cabbage, you are going to end up having a beautiful colored ferment. So I'll show you what happens. Like this is a yellow cabbage I fermented with a little bit of red cabbage and look how it turned pink just from the red cabbage. So whatever you use red cabbage with, if you ferment it, it will change it to this really pretty color. Now what I think is really nifty is I have one of these acacia wood packers and they're wonderful because this wider end is for a wide mouth jar and then the smaller one is for a regular mouth jar. And I like to get some of my fermenting things from mason tops. And all you're gonna do is it's gonna allow you to mush it down because I want to get all that luscious cabbage in that jar. So now I can put more in. Now the rule is when you ferment, you definitely want to keep some headspace at the top. I usually like to say about an inch and a half headspace, and I always use my finger. So each one of your lines in your finger is an inch, so I go about an inch and a half from the top. So I definitely want to go to about there. So I'll put a little bit more in there. See all the juice in there already? So now what I'm going to do is use the juice and I'm going to pour it over my ferment. And this is one of my favorite tools when I ferment is a chopstick. So all you're going to do is I stick it in there because the liquid kind of gets trapped because you're pressing it and packing it so tightly. So you want to make sure that all that liquid goes in between all the vegetables in there and the, and the apple. 
So did you see how it all just got sucked up in there now? Because sometimes you get some little air pockets in there. Okay. Look at that, the juice is coming up. Ooh, that was perfect. Sometimes you may not get a lot of juice that you're produced on that. So you could, if you don't hardly have any, sometimes I've added a little filtered water to my sauerkraut, you can do that. Um, or just wait like in the next day or two, it's gonna produce some more liquid. And sometimes if you don't get enough, you might need to add a little bit. You can maybe get a little water and just put, you know, like a teaspoon of salt in there, mix it up and then pour it over it um, and make a little brine and you can just do that. But right now this was turned out good. That's what you get for getting fresh vegetables. So now I'm gonna use the top I, that I have, the big piece of cabbage, and I'm gonna pack it in there really good because that's gonna protect my cabbage Push it under that brine really good and protect it so it doesn't get any air to it whatsoever. So right now, all my apple kraut, the cabbage, the caraway seeds, and, and the cabbage and the apples are all underneath the brine and this big cabbage, cabbage leaf is pushing it down. I have an inch and a half head space. I'm gonna wipe off my top and then I need a fermenting top. So this is by Mason Tops. You can go to offgridwithdougandstacy.com and go to the shop tab, just like with the real salt, and you can get a discount there too. So this top, there's a little hole in the top that's gonna let the gases that start to build up during the fermentation process, you know, that good lactic acid, it's gonna go out, but it won't let the bad stuff in. So you're gonna put that on top. And I like to use these because it's hands-free fermenting. Now, if you don't have a Mason Tops like I use, all you're gonna need is just a flat. Put it on top like that, and then I would put it on a plate. You're gonna set it somewhere in your house at room temperature away from direct sunlight, and you're gonna let it ferment anywhere, you know, from seven to 14 days. So after seven days or so, you might wanna go in there, give it a taste, and then see how it tastes. And then if you want it a little bit more tangy, go a few more days. I generally like to go, you know, closer to 14, but it depends also if it's very hot and humid out, it's gonna ferment quicker. So room temperature, you know, generally between 62, 72, 75 degrees will be a pretty good ferment. The hotter it gets, it's gonna ferment a lot quicker. So just be aware of that. That's why you wanna go less on the number of days. So seven or to 14 days or so. And then when you're finished, you'll take off your lid, take off the cabbage leaf, and then if you have the fermenting top, you'll replace it with a regular lid, just like this. And then you're gonna put this in cold storage. So you can either put it in a refrigerator or down in a root cellar, and it will last you many months. And it's wonderful, you can add it with you know, your meals, if you're having some chicken, or if you wanna put it on your salad, or just eat it by itself. It's just a wonderful way to add a little bit of a fermented food to your diet, it tastes wonderful, and it's simple to do. So I bet you guys are wondering, I know a lot of you were like, what is she gonna do with the rest of that? And what are you gonna do with the cores of your cabbage? Don't throw them away because they're wonderful. So all I'm gonna do is chop them up really, really nice because tonight when we have our salad, every day Doug and I, I try to make a great big salad with lots of different things in it. Leafy greens and all this wonderful cruciferous vegetables because they're so good at detoxification. So I'm gonna use what's left over, the apples with that, and probably put some sunflower seeds in there. And it's strawberry season, we've been getting lots of strawberries also. So maybe I'll put some strawberries and kind of make a, like a fruity kind of salad because I got the apples in there too. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put all this together and then I'll get some greens from the garden and I'll mix this on up, put some nuts some strawberries and I think it'll be good. Well, if I get a little pep in my step, by the end of this video, maybe I'll show you what the salad looks like. We'll see. <laughs> Stay tuned for that one. I have super, super, super good news for everyone, finally. I'm so thankful for a lot of you guys that have been so patient that did pre-order my fermenting book that I wrote. It is finished, it's at the printer now, yay! <laughs> I'm just so happy it is finished. It has over a hundred recipes. Actually, I have 101 recipes when I talk about honey ferments, I talk about vegetable ferments, I talk about fruit ferments, I talk about ferments that my grandmother did, I talk about sourdough, I talk about drinks, I do condiments. It's got everything in it. So if you guys are interested in my fermenting book, 
You can go to offgridwithdougandstacy.com too and go to the shop tab and you can find it there. But it is at the printers finally, yay! So thanks again for you guys being patient waiting for such a long time. But what I want you guys to do is leave me a comment below if you guys are gonna start, this will be your first ferment that you ever have done. I want you to try it, let me know if you are, or if you're gonna try this at all. Um, I can't wait to hear from you and you know, have a beautiful, wonderful day and I'll see you soon. Bye.